Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. Chancellor, since we last spoke, Donald Trump has been re-elected. Does that change your securonomics vision, given it was at least partly inspired by Bidenomics? Well, the idea of Securonomics is that we build a strong and secure uh, economy on strong foundations. And that does mean uh, thinking about where things are made and who uh, makes them. It means uh, being more resilient in the face of uh, shocks, whether those be energy price shocks or uh, pandemics. And I think those are important principles because the UK has found itself very exposed, uh, whether it is the uh, energy price shock after mm. Russia's invasion of Ukraine or during the pandemic and, and struggling to... Uh, get the supplies of, of vital equipment that are needed. But would you rule out regulatory tariffs? Uh, well, look, I think it would be wrong to speculate what an incoming uh, US administration uh, would do. Uh, but we benefit, and so does the United States, from trade worth more than £300 billion uh, a year. Uh, that trade is growing, and it's important for the prosperity of both the United Kingdom and the United States. And we'll continue to make representations for free and open trade that benefits both of our nations. OK, let's turn to your Mansion House speech. When it comes to harnessing pension money to boost growth, what are you going to offer in terms of reform that your Conservative predecessors didn't? Well, I've long believed that we need to reform how the UK pension system uh, works. And I welcome what the previous government and what uh, Jeremy Hunt did when he was Chancellor uh, to look at the consolidation and the investment choices of uh, pension funds. But I want to go further because there's more that we can do to unlock that long-term patient capital to help British businesses like Quell, where we are today in White City in London and others Hence the lab to grow. Coats. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and also to help secure investment into infrastructure. If you look around the world to so countries like Canada, where I was in the summer, or Australia, they have mega pension funds that achieve economies of scale, get better returns for their savers, and help unlock that long-term growth that we desperately need in Britain. But you mentioned Australia. Australia gives tax breaks to funds that invest in domestic companies. Will you offer the same? We already have very generous uh, tax breaks for investing in pensions and rightly so. We want to incentivise people to uh, invest and save for the future. What we don't have in the UK is mega pension funds. We don't have those economies of scale in our pension funds, which is why the interim report that we're publishing uh, looks at having a minimum size of 25 or 50 £50 billion, pounds, uh, um, uh, similar to what you have in Canada and the United uh, States. Those sorts of mega funds will have the expertise to make those investments, both in start-up and scale-up businesses and in British infrastructure. I get that size matters, but I'm wondering how you get that money into UK companies. Are you looking at mandatory minimums? We're not looking at uh, mandating pension funds. What we're looking at in these reforms, building on the reforms of the previous government, is to uh, create a smaller number of big pension funds with the expertise and the scale to make those long-term investments. Uh, Quell, where we are today, received money from the British Business Bank, which leverages in private sector investment. But most of the uh, funding that this business and so many other scale-up businesses in Britain have been able to access comes from the United States. I don't want it just to be US investors benefiting from investment in UK startups and scale-ups. I want savers here in Britain to be able to benefit from that growth potential that we see at this business and so many others. Chancellor, there's also the issue of how you get more money into the pension pots in the first place. Employers are already squeezed by the tax hikes in the budget. How are you going to address that? Well, by the end of this decade, we expect to have £1.3 uh, trillion pounds, uh, in pension funds, either in DC or in the local government pension scheme. But I don't think anyone believes that money is working well enough, either for savers or indeed for our wider economy. And the reforms that we're bringing in is about ensuring that the money that is invested, the assets under management, work better for the UK economy and work better for savers. I'm just wondering what's different to what Jeremy Hunt did, because he just finished this consultation into consolidating the local government pension scheme. It made these exact points. Do you really need another consultation? Well, the difference between what we're doing and what the previous government um, did is that we're going to legislate. 
and the previous government they haven't had a pensions bill, didn't have a pensions bill for around five years. Uh, we have a slot in the King's speech for a pensions bill in this session of Parliament. We'll be introducing legislation in the, mar in the spring so that we don't just talk about consolidation in the pension industry. Anyone can do that, but we actually make sure that it happens. That's the difference between this government and the previous government. We're getting on and doing the job. All right. What about the regulators? How are you going to make them prioritise competitiveness? Well, I'll be publishing the remit letters to the regulators tomorrow um, at the Mansion House uh, speech. Uh, obviously, regulation is incredibly important, both for protecting consumers, but also uh, for protecting our wider e economy. Uh, but we don't just need to regulate for risk. We also need to regulate for growth. Uh, there's huge growth potential in our financial services uh, sector. The secondary objective that we supported in opposition is really important, but we now need to bring that to life and ensure that our regulatory system helps businesses to grow, not just manage risk. But Chancellor, US investors tell us that all these recent regulatory reviews make investing in UK financial services less attractive. Are you planning anything to give them more certainty? We had a very welcome response over the last few months, whether that's to our changes in ring, ring fencing rules, our implementation of the Basel uh, rules, or indeed the FCA's rules around listing in London. Things that we've done in our first four months of government to make Britain a more attractive place for global investors in financial uh, services. We brought in £63 billion worth of investment at the International Investment Summit uh, just a few uh, weeks ago. So we recognise the important role that regulators have in encouraging growth in financial services, not just managing down risk. I mean, it's the motor services they're pointing to. And there's a court case at the moment, so uh, it's important to let that uh, work through the system and be up to the motor finance companies whether they um, appeal the court decision. Uh, it is welcome that that sector continues to offer motor uh, finance uh, through a number of workarounds, but it's now up to those individual companies uh, whether they want to appeal the court decision. All right, Chancellor, good luck with your Mansion House speech tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you.